Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and in today's video, I will be discussing five things I would like to see in The Wolf Among Us Season 2 that I think could make it a fantastic game. I want to thank you all for the support in the last couple videos. If you guys have any topics you'd like me to cover, as again, we are going to be waiting another year until this game releases roughly probably 2021, we will get it. Uh, make sure to comment down below theories, predictions, etc. you guys would like me to discuss and I'll try to get a video discussed about it. Like I said, my goal is about one or two videos every two, three weeks in regards to The Wolf Among Us Season 2 until we really get close to its release and get a lot of information and news. So let me know your list down below, five things you'd like to see in The Wolf Among Us Season 2, and let's get straight into the video. Goal for this video is 500 likes. <laughs> So the first thing I'd like to see is more fight scenes, especially in Bigby's wolf forms. And the finale episode of The Wolf Among Us 1 had probably one of the greatest fight scenes I can remember in a Telltale game, where it was Bigby against Bloody Mary. That was such an incredible fight, especially getting to see Bigby's final form. And I hope, like I said, Snow White in The Wolf Among Us 2 wants Bigby to return into his old ways, his old fighting styles. So I would love if we get the opportunity to have more, you know, final form wolf fights with Bigby and just in general more fights. There's going to be more villains. And with a new engine, new gameplay things coming, I hope we have the opportunity maybe to even have control of Bigby in these fights more than just pressing buttons. Just like I know The Walking Dead Final Season introduced free-flowing combat a little bit, I'd like to see if we maybe can get something like that in The Wolf Among Us 2. Let's move on to number two. He knows the ones I'm talking about. There's bound to be information on her here. Somewhere. So as a heads up, spoiler warning, if you do read the comic books, Bigby and Snow eventually end up getting married together. But again, that's not going to be until way after Wolf Among Us 2 is over, and that's like way in the future. So in The Wolf Among Us Season 2, I'd like to see an expansion on... Bigby and Snow's relationship. I'm not saying they have to fall in love because again, that's like 10, 20 years ahead of what's going to happen in Wolf Among Us 2. But having, you know, a romance, I'm going to say a romance scene, maybe, you know, just having Bigby have a, be attached to someone. You know he has feelings for Snow, but in the Wolf Among Us 1, it never really became a dual relationship kind of thing. I want to see in the Wolf Among Us 2, I want it to see it become a relationship where they actually care about each other. I wouldn't say dating per se, per se, but where they're something you uh you stopped breathing you know when you passed out or now for number three i'm just gonna put two of these together i don't want to have these as separate ones so longer episodes and choices mattering more let's first talk about longer episodes so at the time the wolf among us was released and all that the episodes were about an hour 30 fairly short compared to Again, future Telltale titles as, again, Tale of the Warlands and some other future titles went to an hour 45 tours. Then The Walking Dead final season, we got almost, again, two hours, 30 minutes in terms of episodes. So considering that they are taking all this time and this game is not releasing in 2020, I expect the episodes to be over two and a half hours long, two hours, 30 minutes, I would say, maybe even three hours if we can get a real big stretch on that. Knowing how slow I usually play some episodes, maybe I can get to three hours. That's something I really would want to see. Secondly, choice is mattering. This is synonymous with Telltale Games. If you've played a Telltale game before, you know this. Choices, 99.9% .9 of the time, don't matter. And a lot of people are like saying, in the last video where I talked about gameplay improvements, they want to see it be like, something like Detroit Become Human. Now, I don't see that really happening considering this is following comics and there's a certain order of things that have to happen, but I'd like to see choices matter, where if I make a decision with a character where they die and the, another character lives, I'd like to see one character that I saved make a difference. Or again, the character that died potentially could bite me back in the butt, that they could eventually do something that could help us out. Just, that's an example of Really, choices. How you doing? Please, please, Bigby. Please, don't. Bigby, 
What happened to Sheriff? Please don't kill me, Sheriff. I don't want to die. Please, please don't kill me. If you don't talk, I might have to do just that. Now, in the last video, I discussed new gameplay interactions that they're going to be adding new gameplay features. And what I discussed is where I'd like to see a clue finding system slash more activity with the backgrounds. In The Walking Dead Final Season, remember, we had that where we could, you know, at least as Clementine control some movements and find collectibles. Now, I want it to be a little more expansive than that, where we have more control over Big B. Just in general, it doesn't have to be something, you know, game breaking, but with the new engine and new graphical improvements and all this, I expect something a little more expansive on The Walking Dead final season, but it can't, it's not gonna be something too out of this world. Since again, this they did reiterate, this is going to be like a telltale game. You're not as bad as everyone says you are. I need to tell you something. I have to tell you something. I feel like we've met before. You're trying to place me. You like my ribbon? Do you like it? Faith wore one too. Would hide her beauty so she could escape his kingdom. They used to call me the Little Mermaid. Did Dr. Swinehart ever get back to you about Faith? He said he wanted to run more tests. I hope you find what you're looking for. I'll see you around. Now, there is no guarantee that in The Wolf Among Us 2 we will get an answer to this, because in the past it's been mentioned that there may not ever be an answer to this question. But, if you are unaware, at the end of Episode 5 there is a major, major cliffhanger, and that is as to who is Bigby talking to at the end. Now, a lot of people have a lot of different ideas about who this could be. Since it's been such a long time since the first game ended, People have made numerous theories, predictions, etc. And I'll probably end up doing a video middle, maybe end of this year about who I think this could be. Considering I played it probably two times and I'll do another walkthrough um, definitely before it uh, comes out in 2021. Now, a lot of people don't expect this person to be Narissa. They expect it to be somebody else. Now, what people will say, though, is that this could end up being Faith. Now, if you don't know... Characters in The Wolf Among Us can glamour themselves to look like other characters. And that's a big mystery here that basically Faith glamoured herself to look like Nerissa and glamoured the dead Nerissa head to look like hers, put the head on Bigby's uh, doorstep and is manipulating Bigby all along in order to take down the Crooked Man. That's a big, big, big thing. Now, I'm not going to go in depth into it considering the fact that it's, it's, it's very confusing. It's a very long thing to explain, but... Or, Narissa, glamoured as Faith, meets Bigby at the beginning, starts a conflict with the Woodsman, which leads to Bigby stepping in, and then brief interaction would be enough for him to, to want to solve Faith's murder after she put the head on the stoop. So putting it all together, it was Narissa who had been manipulating Bigby all along, forcing an investigation that ultimately led, leads to the Crooked Man. And like I said, with the music that pops from the end in the the similarities they put in between the two conversations. It's one of the biggest questions I think that people want to know going into the second game is that we get an answer to this. And again, it's very likely we do not get an answer to it, though. And I hope to God we do, though, because it's very interesting. And a lot of people have told me, Dom, we need that answer. We need it. And hopefully we do. But those are five things I would like to see that, in my opinion, will make The Wolf Among Us 2 a very, very great game. Um, also, I just want to say I might do a part two of this, considering there's also more things I'm, I want to mention that I didn't get to in this video. But please, again, I'll be doing one video probably every two weeks uh, regarding The Wolf Among Us Season 2, considering we have a long way to go until it's released next year. But let me know down below in the comments what you thought of what I said. And if, please, if you did enjoy this video and you made it this far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any Wolf Among Us 2 news, videos, theories, predictions, and more as we get closer to 2021. All right, everyone. You guys have a great one, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.